Hi, I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series for grade seven students. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to divide by decimal numbers. If you want to learn from me, you can always write an email to me on the given address. We can have one on one Zoom classes to learn the concepts. In this video, we are going to discuss how to divide by decimals. We'll take up cases where we'll be dividing by tens and multiples of 10. We can also write tens as in the exponent form shown here, 100 to the power of two, for example, right? It is 100, 100, right? Okay, we'll see that. We'll see how to divide by multiples of five. Five times two is 10, correct? And so dividing by five could be simpler. If I could convert five to 10, that is what we will practice. Then we'll follow simple steps to divide using decimal numbers in the denominator. We'll also see how the results change when we change the position of decimal in numerator and in denominator. And then we'll follow up with word problems. So I've got at least five word problems here to discuss. They will really help you to understand the scenario related to decimal division. So here we have two different questions which will be discussed at length. Well, when I write, for example, 0 0.221 divided by 1.3, it can also be written as 0 0.221 over 1.3, right? So that may be convenient at times. You will see that normally what we are going to do is remove the decimal from the denominator. In this case, since we have three in the tenth place, we should be multiplying both numerator and the denominator by 10. That will result in movement of this decimal by one position in the numerator also, right? So in this case, we should get something which is equivalent to 2.21 over 13. Now, it becomes simpler. It is like normal division. So the idea here is that in most cases, you have to remove the decimal number from the denominator. So the concept here is to remove decimal from denominator. So denominator is the bottom part of a fraction, which let me just say, this is the denominator, correct? That is what we, the denominator, and this is called numerator. Perfect. So let me write it inside. It's just going slightly outside. This is called numerator. Perfect. So let's take some examples to understand the whole process. Now here are four questions. I'd like you to pause the video, answer these questions, and then look into my suggestions, right? Now, when we divide, we get a smaller number, right? So division will give a smaller number. In these cases, we are dividing by numbers which are greater than one, right? Smaller number after division when divisor is greater than one. Do you see that? When divisor is greater than one. So in this particular case, divisor is 10, 100, 10, 100. All are greater than one. So we expect a smaller number. Now when we divide by tens and hundreds, it is change in place value.
Let's see how. So in this particular case, the very first one, we are dividing by 10. So when you have a number, let's rewrite this number as 123. So when you divide, write it like a decimal at the end. Okay, so you can always write 123 as 123.0 and we are going to divide this by 10. It basically means that we have to shift this decimal by one place since 10 has got one zero in it. So when you divide by 10, the decimal shifts by one place and the result which you get is equal to what? Is 12.3. Do you see that? So that decimal comes to one place on the left hand side reducing the number from 123 to 12.3. Do you see that change? 123 to 12.3. Now I hope the concept is clear. You can pause the video and answer the rest of the questions, right? I'll take time to rewrite them and you write down the answers, right? Then you check your answers with mine. So here we have 3.24 divided by 100. The next is 20.63 divided by 10. These are your practice questions, okay? And see how easily they all can be done. We have to only change the position of the decimal. So two zeros here means two places, but smaller. Now here if you push it one place while well, we don't have any other number here so introduce another zero and then use the number right so we get our, our answer which should be 0 0.0324 do you see that part so sometimes we may have to introduce zeros on the left side putting zeros on this left side doesn't really change anything and even zeros on the right side after a decimal does not make a difference okay Next one here is dividing by 10. So we'll change this position to the left side, reducing the number from 20.63 to what? 2.063, right? 2.063. Do you see that? So that is how we are going to change and then write down our answer. Now we have to divide by 100, as you have seen earlier. It means moving left, decimal place, moving left two places but you know what we have only one place on this left side so let me introduce another zero here so we'll now move it two places and we get our number which should be 0 0.00123 is that clear to you right it is a good practice to write a zero before the decimal if there is nothing there so i hope you got most of them right let's move on and practice more to get all of them right perfect now this time we're doing the same thing as we did earlier however we have written 100 as 10 square right so remember when i write 10 square it really means what it means 10 times 10 and when you're multiplying by tens zeros get added up at the end it is kind of like this similarly if i have 10 cube it really means what it means there are three zeros. Do you see that part? That is what it means. Now the question for you is, what is 10 rather 100 square equals to? Do you know that part? So this is a question for you. By the time we come to that question number eight, you should have your answer ready. Let's begin answering the questions one by one now, starting with question number five. We are dividing by 10 square, right? So we have 123 divide by i will write 10 square as 100 so that you know well there are two places well did i really have to do that can't i see that two on the exponent that can also help yes so next time i'm not going to do that i will write 0 0.04 divided by 10 cube only because i know there are three zeros in it it is a short form to write much better to work with correct so this time we have 6.8 divided by 10 cube. And what should I do with this? <coughs> well, big number. Let's write down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 100 square. Means 
add two more zeros. So that is what 100 square is, right? Remember, 100 square means 100 times 100, correct? That really means we are talking about 10,000. Do you see that? So 100 square is 10,000, like I have written here. Now, let us write down their answers quickly. I hope you remember the process. It is only shifting the decimals. Two places means we'll introduce decimal right there in this particular case. Here, this three means three places. So this decimal has to move three places. We don't have enough zeros on the left side. Let us introduce them. One, two, and three places, correct? This time again, three places. Let's introduce more zeros and move the decimal. One, two, and three. Now here we have how many zeros? Well, four zeros. So this decimal at the end will move by four units. One, two, three, and four. There you get all your answers. So let me rewrite the answers with correct decimal position. So first particular case will be 1.23 when divide 123 by 100, right? So 123 changes to 1.23. And next one here, will be a very very small number zero point how many zeros oh my god four zeros one two three four and the number four perfect then we have a game uh well this time we have four numbers after decimal right but three zeros perfect so it is zero point zero or uh, two zeros six eight and the last one here is one point two three four five Match your answers and see if you got the right ones. Okay, now let's understand another way of dividing. In this particular case, we are dividing by 5. Hmm. Can I convert 5 to 10? See, 5 times 2 is equal to 10. And we have seen dividing by 10 is very simple. So why not convert 5 to 10? Let us see how we are going to do it now. So we can rewrite this as a fraction. We have 12.3 divided by 5. What I can do here is multiply both by 2, right? Multiply both by 2. In that case, I'm going to get this fraction as 2 <clears throat> multiply by 2, right? 24.6 divided by 10. And now we can easily write down the number by shifting this particular decimal by one unit to the left. And what I get here is 2.46. Is that clear to you? Well, let us follow this process once again to really understand. Now we have 3.24 divided by 0 0.5. Okay, let's multiply both by 2. And what do we get? Well, if I multiply both by 2, in this particular case, twice 3.24 is 6.48. And twice 0.5 is 5 times 2 is 10. I have to put a decimal number, as you know, after one place. So I get 1.0. It is as good as dividing by 1. So we get the same answer, which is 6.48. Does it make sense to you? I think it does. Okay, let's do the next one, which is 20.63 divided by, this time, 0 0.05. Now let's again multiply by 2, both in numerator and denominator. Then what do we get? Well, let's rewrite this. We get 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 2, 1, and so we get this as 1 here and 41 divided by 0 0.10. Now we have 0 0.1 to divide by. So first place, we have to now straight away move the decimals. So as I move decimals to the right for both numerator and denominator, I kind of get my answer also, right? It is as good as dividing by 1. And so I get my answer as 412.6. Do you see what I did here? So basically, let me show you once again this particular fraction. I wrote like what? Let's rewrite and understand. When I move the decimal to the right, I actually get 412.6. And we are dividing that by 1.0. So we get the same number. 
Is that clear to you? Perfect. Now let's do the next one, which is for us 0 0.763 divided by 50. Well, I can multiply 50 by 2 also, make it 100. Then also it is easy to divide by decimals. So when I do 2 times, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 1, 2 times 7 is 14, so we get 1.4 <coughs> plus 1 5, and that will be divided by 50 times 2 is 100. That means I have to move the decimal two places to the left. And when I do that, what do I get? Well, in that case, I get 0 0.01526. So figure this out. We did it earlier, division by 100 means really you have to move your decimal two places to the left. Perfect. So that is how you're going to do it. Okay. So I hope division by numbers related to 5, like 0 0.5, 0 0.05, or 50 is absolutely clear. So it is a good practice to convert them to tens, hundreds, and related numbers. Now, talking about related, well, here I have a very different question. The question here is, given that 221 divided by 13 is 17, odd numbers, right? Prime numbers, rather. So we are given that 221, when divided by 13, is equal to 17, right? This is given to us, okay? Now, the question is, you have to divide 221, no, 22.1 by 13. Oh, let's see this. How do we get this answer? Now, we have to do 22.1 divided by 13. And what we know is this, that 221 divided by 13 is 17, right? So, to get it back to 221, what are we going to do? Think like this. Like this is 13.0, right? So we can move the decimal. This is same as 221 divided by 130. Well, when I divided by 13, I got the answer as 17. So this is like 1.7. Do you understand what I did? I actually moved the decimal of 17 by one more place. So what I'm trying to say here is it is as good as Dividing it by 10, right? So when I do that, then this 0 reduces the numerator, right? So dividing by 13, 130 is like this. So 130 can be thought of as 13 times 10. You're further dividing by 10, this particular result. So it becomes 1 tenth of 17, and that is 1.7. Does it make sense to you? Well, let's do another question related to this to understand this concept. So now we have 221 divided by 1.3. Now, how do I make this 13? Well, I can multiply both by 10. Okay, so I get 221, 0, divided by 13. So I multiplied both by 10. And so now my answer gets multiplied by 10 because I know that 221 by 13 is 17. So I get my answer as 170. Have a close look at it to understand what really I have done. One more time, we have 2.21 divided by 130. Well, now this time, let's rewrite this as 221 on the top. In that case, I have to move two decimal places. So it is 130. And since I moved this right to two decimal places, right, one, two, I have to add two zeros here. That means to the answer, which was 17, what do I have to do? I have to divide it further by 1,000. Move the decimal three places to the left. So basically, we had like this, 17 divided by 1,000. Do you see that? It is kind of same as... 17 divided by 1000, since we know that 221 over 13 is 17, right? So what we know here is that this portion, when you divide 221 by 13, we get 17. Do you see that? Now we have three extra zeros to take care of. 
and therefore we have to think about dividing by 1000 which means we have to move it to three places and write our answer as 0 0.017 so it becomes 0 0.17 thousandth do you see that that is what it meant by giving you something and then asking for something else let's continue so now we have 0 0.221 and this is to be divided by 1.3. So let's write this in the form 221 over 13 first. How do I get there? Well, to get there, I have to multiply both by what? Well, this time 1000 once again, correct. So when I do that, what do I get? I get the value, which is 221 on the numerator. To do this, I have to move to three places. So think like this. I move decimal to three places in the numerator here also one two I have a same liberty here right and then three so it becomes 1300 do you see that so this time what are we doing we are dividing 221 by 13 an additional hundred and therefore think about writing 17 over 100 and that means we have to put decimal after two places and becomes 0 0.17 as our answer. So that is how this exercise should be done. Have a close look at it. It's slightly tricky, right? But I hope you understand the process. Do it once again. Fine. Let's move on and take the next question. Now this is kind of division with decimals in both numerator and denominator. Now in this particular case, we'll adopt a policy that is uh, we'll say get rid of decimals from the denominator, right? That is what we are going to do, right? So the idea is uh, to avoid decimal in denominator. Let's see how we can do that. Well, definitely multiply by 10 standard powers, right? Then you can do that, correct? So let's try to think what we are doing. So what we have here is 0 0.049 divided by 0 0.07. There are two decimal places in the denominator. We can move both numerator and denominator by two places to the right. And so what we are going to get here is, as you can see, we get 4.9 divided by 0, 07 can be written as 7. And now you can perform the division process, right? You understand how to do long division aligning the decimals right so in this case we have now 4.9 and what are we going to do is going to divide this by 7 since 4 cannot go we'll write 0 here and then put a decimal we're using the number after the decimal to divide by right 7 goes 7 times to 49 and we just get the same answer no remainder so we get the quotient which is 0 0.7 as our answer correct the next one here is 1.21 divided by 1.1 now in this case to get rid of decimal in the denominator we can only move it to one place right so since there is one place after the decimal we kind of move our decimal and write this as 12.1 divided by 11 now that is simple 11 goes one times in 12 and then we get one remainder and so it becomes 11 further so it goes 0.1 so whenever you use a number after the decimal you have to put that decimal in perfect next one here is 738 and we have to divide 738 by 0 0.06 that really means that well assume that there are more decimal places we have to move by two places as shown here so that means I could write this as 73800 over 6. And now we can perform the long division to get our answer. Correct? So 6 goes 1 time. So we get 1 times 6 and we get 13 here. And 6 goes 2 times. We get 1 here. 6 goes 3 times and we get 2 zeros. So that becomes your answer. So that is another way of dividing which you have already learned. But you could divide and get your answer as shown here. Now, the next question here is, we have 0 0.0035, and we are going to divide this by 2.5. So we have one place after decimal, 
So we'll move both numerator and denominator by one place. So we get 0 0.035 divided by 25. Now, as we did with fives, with 25, you can actually multiply by 4 and get your answer. You could do that, right? So you could do that, or you may perform long division and get your answer. Choice is yours. So what I will do here is multiply both by 4, since I think Dividing and multiplying by hundreds is very, very simple. So why not, right? So 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 2. 4 times 3 is 12. And 14, 4, 1. So we can write this. And we know there are two decimal, three decimal places as shown here. And in this case, 25 quarter times 4 is 100. So now we can write down the answer by shifting decimal two more places to the left. So the number becomes much more smaller. So it gets 0 0.0014. That is what you're going to get. So shifting decimal to the left when you are dividing by 100 is a good way of doing it. So I hope this step is clear. Go through it once again. And now that brings us to the word problems. Let's try to understand when should we divide and how should we divide by decimal numbers. So question number 21 here is, how many 0 0.4 meter lengths of rope can be cut from a roll of 227.2 meters long, right? So what you should, you should do here, right? You have to divide, right? How many of 0.4? Okay, so that means 227.2 should be divided by 0 0.4. So first step, get rid of decimals, right? So we get 227 and then bring this 2 and then bring this 4. So we removed one one decimal place from both numerator and denominator and we got our answer as 2272 divided by 4. And now you can divide and write down the answer. So let's do that part. So when you divide by 4, 4 goes 5 times 20, then you get 2 here, 27. 4 goes 6 times 24, 32, and you get 568 as your answer. Is that clear to you? You could also do long division. Okay, the next one here is to question 22. If $1256.50 is shared equally among seven, how much money will each receive? So the key word here is shared. So whenever we have the word shared, then we have to divide, right? So we should be dividing. This time, the number which is in dollars given to us as 1256.50. We have to divide this by 7. So uh, let me rewrite this 1 to 5, 6. I'll, okay, we'll write dollar later in the answer. So we get 1, 2, 5, 6, 0, divided by 7. Now 7 is already a whole number, so we can straight away divide by 7 and write down the answer. So what do you get? 7 goes one time in 12. So you get 5 here, 55. 7 times 8 is 56. So 1 less than 8, so 17. 66. 66. 7 times 9 is 63. So 35. And after decimal, so we have to put the decimal and that goes five times. Well, so it goes even. So we'll put zero. Since we're talking about dollars, right? So therefore, we have to write that each person gets $179.50. So that becomes the answer. So in a word problem, you have to write answer in a statement. And therefore, I will introduce the answers in a statement for both the questions which we have done. So in the first question, it was how many 0 0.4 meter lengths of rope can be cut from this roll? We got 568. So we should be writing this in a statement that we get 568 lengths. Right? In this case, if 1256.5 is shared equally among seven, how much money will each receive? You should write better, each will receive 
dollar 179.50 do you see that that is better than only writing 568 lens you may actually extend this and write 568 lengths of 0 0.4 meter rope will be available right something like this it is better to explain your answer also in a word problem now let's continue with question number 23 which is evaluate 0 0.17 divided by 2.5 using two different strategies okay so basically we have to divide 0 0.17 by 2.5 one way is to get rid of decimals from the denominator and so one position we have to shift so i could write this as 1.7 divided by 25 and then we can do this process right we can actually divide at this stage and then write down the answer or we can do the other strategy and that is we can convert 0 0.17 and 2.5 2.5 times 4 quarter times 4 is 100 that helps okay so 0 0.17 divided by 2.5 can be now written as what we are going to first multiply and we are going to multiply them by fours as we learn in our strategy if i do that in that case 4 times 7 is 28 2 right 4 times 1 is 4 and 2 is 6 68 with a decimal right there and in the denominator it becomes this is 2.5 right so it becomes 100 we have to put a decimal here to so 10.0 dividing by 10 basically means moving decimal one more place to the left so it be 068 does it make sense so we definitely get an answer which is 0 0.068 but the methods are shown here you could either adopt this method of multiplying by 4 getting 10 in the denominator and then moving the decimal that is one method the other one is you can do the long division which i didn't do but this is simpler perfect so adopt one of these methods whenever in the denominator you have numbers like 25 or 50 decimal could be at any point right now here is a word problem for you it says question number 24 a dry fruit mixture contains 0 0.934 kg of walnuts, 1.56 kg of almonds, 0 0.79 kg of cashew nuts, and 2.0512 kg of raisins. Find the total mass of the mixture. Okay. And then, if this is shared equally, means divided into four friends, how much mixture will each get? So you have to add and then divide by four to get your answer, right? So this I'll say is your assignment. So this is the assignment for you. You can do the assignment and submit. I'll check your answers. So what you have to do here is there are a couple of quantities in this 0 0.934 is it contains two small kg of walnuts that those many are walnuts and then we have uh, 1.56 so align the decimal this is kind of critical and put zeros at other placeholders and 0 0.79 0 0.79 again a zero here do you see that and then cash units 2.0512 don't miss this zero right zero five one and two Oh my god so one more decimal place put zeros everywhere else also and then you have to add it it becomes simpler do you see that let me use a different ink to add them up so we have two here and then we have four plus one as five there and then we add this three and six is nine nine and nine is 18 18 and five is 23 so three and two there and then we'll add 2 and 9, 11. And 5 is 16. 16 plus 7 is again 13, 3, 23, I mean. 16 and 23, 2 there. So we get 2, 3, 4, and 5. We get 5.3352. And this has to be divided by, so that becomes a total mass. So total mass here is 5.33. 5, 2, and the units here for us is kg. It is important to write units in your answers. So 5 point this much. 
If this is shared equally among four friends, that means this to be divided by four. So 5.3352 should be divided by four to get your answer, correct? So now let us see what do we get our answer. You can divide by four, four times one is four, then you get one here, four times three is 12, you get one here, four times three is 12, you get one here, four times three is 12, you get three there, and that is eight. And so you get so many cages. So each friend will get how much? Will get 1.3338 kg, right? That is how you can write your answer. Total mass of the mixture, we can say total mass of the mixture is, is 5.3352 kg. Is that clear to you? So that is how you should be writing. Now let's have a good look at the questions which we did, right? Did we write all the units? Check your answer. Well, in the first case, 568 lengths. Lengths is a unit, right? Numbers. In the second case, we are talking about the dollars, and therefore the dollar was included in the units. So when you do your work, it is a good practice to check your result. Go back, especially to the word problem. See, if you have written the statements which are required and also the units which should be included. So with that, we come to the conclusion of our video on how to divide by decimal numbers. I hope you got the great concept of dividing by decimals. So remember, when you divide by tens or its powers, what you need to do is we have need to just move the decimal places. Perfect. So for example, in this one, we have to move by four places. So the decimal one, two, three, four. And clearly, the answer in this case would be 1.2345. And in the other case, what you have to do is move the decimal so that you get a whole number, right, in the denominator, right? So we have two steps to divide a decimal is to get a whole number. Since there is one number here, we could have divided this by 2.21 by 13 to get our result. Correct. That is how we are going to do it. Whenever you divide and take a number which is after the decimal, you have to always write decimal right there. So in this particular case, let's write, we cannot divide 2 by 13, but we have to take another 2 to divide by 13. So we put a decimal there and it goes only one time. And when you divide and take away from 12, this value of 13. So, so basically it is 22. And then from there you are taking away 13. So you get what? 12 take away 13 is, 12 take away 13 is uh, 9, right? So you get 9 here. And here we have 91. And how many times will that go? Well, 7 times 3 is 21, 2 there, and we do get 91, correct? So the result will be, let me write down the result here. That would be better. 0 0.17, correct? So 0 0.17 will be our answer. How the steps involved will be as shown here, correct? So what you do here is, Whenever you take a number after decimal, you have to put the decimal and then continue. And that is how you're going to get your result. Perfect. So that is how you have to do. And I hope you also understood the strategy. When we had that relative division, you have to match what is given and see how many additional zeros make a difference. Transferring decimals to left or right. Also in the word problems, remember to write down the units and show the steps. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write a comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. You can always contact me on my address given and learn from me if you like. Thank you and all the best.